Everyone, remain calm. Yeah. Ooh. Ah. That's how it always starts. But then later, there's running and then screaming. Everybody, talk to me. What is happening? Welcome to Jurassic World. You're listening to the Jurassic Park podcast. You want to consult here or in my bungalow? <laughs> Hold on to your butt. Well, we're back. Hello and welcome to the 136th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and we're here to discuss all things Jurassic Park. In this episode, we have a few birthdays to cover, and then we're going to dive right into our monthly Jurassic Mailbag segment with none other than Jennifer Tarek. Now, I gotta say, this is probably our best mailbag segment yet, filled with awesome questions from all of you guys out there, and of course, we derail this podcast hardcore in today's segment. It's uh, just a bunch of gibberish at this point, really, so hopefully you all dig it as much as Jen and I do. But this week, we are skipping over any of the big news. Um, We know there's a lot of stuff going on out there. The Super Bowl was this past weekend, and we got an amazing new trailer for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. It is the official number two trailer. It is such a good time to be a Jurassic fan right now. The trailer, like I said, was amazing, as expected. We did a full analysis of that trailer, me and Steve Hurl from Jurassic Unicast and the Jurassic Pop Quiz on this podcast, um, which you'll probably already see that. In, in your feeds um, we talked about the trailer we talked about the uh, Jeep commercial and we talked slightly about the dinosaur protection group we're going to cover that a lot more in the future um, but check that feed out right now download that one if you haven't and listen to that for sure um, we had a great time breaking it down so make sure to check it out I also had the chance to chat with Aaron Beyer, another contributor on the podcast here over the weekend for a news roundup about mostly everything that's kind of popped up Um, recently in terms of merchandising, live shows, gaming, and so much more. If you didn't check that one out, we do have that on your feed as well. We're kind of taking up your feed here. I think that's going to be the case for a lot of uh, the weeks coming up with uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom coming this summer. There's going to be a lot of extra posts here with the podcast, so check those all out. I hope you all enjoy them. But all right, like I said, we have a packed episode, so why don't we start this one off with a little Jurassic news from around the world. 18 minutes and your company catches up on 10 years of research. Access rate program. Access rate security. These pictures were taken in hospital in Costa Rica 48 hours ago. I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but look. I thought my head being right all the time. But today, I guarantee it. So this week we have a bunch of birthdays to catch up on. A few from the other day and some for this week. Um, Starting last Saturday, uh, February 3rd, Thomas Rosales Jr. played Carter in The Lost World. Happy birthday to him. Uh, Let's see, Sunday, February 4th, Don Davis, the composer for Jurassic Park 3. Monday, uh, February 5th, Robin Sachs, who was Paul Bowman from uh, The Lost World. This is a lot to catch up on, guys. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, (laughs) Wednesday, February 7th, Pete Postlethwaite. Uh, That was his birthday. So I know you can't wish him a happy birthday. He's gone. But um, still say happy birthday to him anyway. Uh, February 8th. John Williams, the maestro himself, composer of Jurassic Park, The Lost World, so close to all of our hearts here. Um, On February 9th, which is Friday, Matty Carteropel, uh, he was the, uh, you know, attendant at the gyrosphere station in Jurassic World. And then Saturday, February 10th, Laura Dern, Ellie Sattler, uh, happy birthday to everybody. That was a lot, man. I don't think I've ever read so many birthdays in one week. We got a lot here in February, so stay tuned for all those. But in the meantime, wish happy birthday to everybody I just listed here. Oh, there it is. There it is. I'm not a computer nerd. I prefer to be called a hacker. Aren't you supposed to be a genius or something? I can't get Jurassic Park back online without Dennis Dendry. We shouldn't be here. And there's five dinosaurs. How many Sarahs do you think are on this island? 
Welcome back, everybody. It's February, and you are listening to the Jurassic Mailbag segment, and I am joined again today, as, as always, by Jennifer Tarek. How you doing? Good, good. I messed up uh, already. You were, like you did. You're like oh, always. I, it, as, as as always, whatever I said, I don't even remember. British or something. That's what I was going. You know, I I sometimes I'm like I should change this podcast up. I should start doing my British accent for you know that was horrible by the way. That, <laughs> that was Australian. I, yeah. Well, the thing is, I have these headphones on. I can't really hear what I'm doing. So I, <laughs> that's probably why I mess up everything. You just like started from New York a minute ago. Wow. Hey yo. Well, hey. Here we are. <laughs> Actually, I'm like pretty close to New York, so it's not that far off. You know, like when I when I do this podcast, I tend to like. Try to I try to like get rid of my accent as best as possible, but I I have like a Jersey accent, you know. Like I, you know, I'm not maybe not this much, but I'm pretty pretty close, you know. Well, welcome to the bilingual Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> you get all kinds of accents. You get Jersey. You get some New York. You get a you get a British one too, but I can't remember how to do it. So you're stuck in Jersey and New uh, York yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is probably the most off the rails intro. Uh-huh. Uh, so let's get to an off the rails question. <laughs> we are right? so off the rails. I don't know where the rails are. Was yeah. that even an intro? I don't know what that was. I don't know. Maybe. Am I recording? Yeah. All right. Two minutes in. <laughs> are we here? Are we even awake? What's I, going don't I don't know. Drink coffee. Hurry up. Uh, all right. <laughs> where would we be if we had more coffee? would be like, wow, in space. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get to this first email here. And this sums it up, I think. Ready? This one is from Colin, and it says, Hello, JP oh, Colin. Podcast. Wait, Colin. <laughs> like the Colin? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Like- maybe that's – maybe I should check that email and see what you know what, what the rest of it was just to make sure. Okay. But so this- I want to know what the Colin wants to know. Oh, he wants to know. Like he is really concerned. He says, Hello, JP Podcast. I have a question for you. What is Jurassic Mailbag? <laughs> that's an excellent question from Colin. Yeah. I I know, right? Like I, I don't know to be honest. And if you, Colin, if you started listening, if this is like the first one you listen to, uh, you can sorry. tell you can tell we don't know what it is. Like straight off the bat. I mean that one day we actually took time to explain what the actual mailbag looked like. That's true. So, so I don't, don't know. know that. I don't know if I would suggest to go back and listen to that though. Not it if was... it's your first first time. Yeah. Be gentler with your first time. Um, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um, I'm talking about the podcast. Where are you going? I Come back. Falling back in a, in a hole again. I don't Come know what's happening. Here. Okay. So late. <laughs> um, wait, what was the question? What's the mailbag? Um, what is it? It is when folks like like Colin, send in nice questions to us, and we answer them. <laughs> Do we? Is that is that really what happens here? Well, they send in nice things about Jurassic to us, and they expect us to, like, have an answer. We never do. Yeah, we basically just, like, ramble for, like, 10 minutes each question, and don't know what we're saying, and fall off the rails, and I mess up. I can't read, apparently. Um, no. I think I'm on a fourth or fifth grade level whatever it was last time um so there's that and then we play some voicemails every now and then so it's like a a community q a outreach program yeah and some people just call and say hi and and play some funny things for us and you know make us laugh so that's what it's all about here in the jurassic mailbag and uh yeah we do it once a month so we do it the first um the first episode the first monday of every month so this is the february edition Yes, it is. So hopefully we answered that question. I feel like that was the best answer we ever gave to any question, really. That's good because that was actually a question about ask, answering questions. So Yeah. I, I mean, if we had messed that up, I don't really know. Like, <laughs> just be like, bye. Should, Hang yeah, it up. We're done. I don't know if we should continue. So let's move on here. We actually uh, we actually have a, a voicemail here from Yaroslav. So let's, uh, let's take a listen. Hey, Brad. Hey, Jen. Uh, it's Yaroslav. Happy New Year. Um, I was just finishing up your latest uh, mailbag, and uh, you guys were talking about the Universal theme park, um, obviously the dress park section in Florida, and uh, you guys were debating on whether or not they should just take it down and uh, renovate it or just have something else take over, which, uh, you know, that would suck. But 
Um, anyway, a thought came up when I was listening to that, and uh, that was, uh, what do you guys think about, um, like, what would you guys think if Universal decided to, you know, renovate uh, the park as the Jurassic World brand, um, like there were rumors about? I know they're doing some renovations this year. I don't know, you know, what they're actually doing, but what would you guys think if they kind of treated it like they did in the film where they built the new, you know, park, essentially. But there were, there's like a restricted area, which is the actual old Jurassic Park ride. And, uh, you know, the um, guests can actually go and visit, like, select um, sections of the old park that they decided to, you know, maintain among the, um, among the new Jurassic World um, area. So, I don't know. I, I was thinking that would be a pretty cool idea. Um, you know, I can see if that would actually kind of bring more attention and, and you know, have uh, people uh, kind of be nostalgic over the old park more and that might actually have more attention brought to it again. And it'd be a funny, you know, full circle thing, I think, um, with that experience. But anyway, um, just want to know what you guys think about that. And, uh, yeah, I forgot to do a dinosaur sound in the beginning. Rawr! There we go. So, yeah, <laughs> can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts. Peace. All right. Uh, wow. That's a pretty good one. I, I have a lot to say, I feel like, about this. Um, he summed it up perfectly for me. So what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, he actually convinced me one a different direction. But I just got to say, every time someone says that they listen to this, I'm amazed. Like, I just want to <laughs> give them applause. And they say, oh, we listened to your last last mailbag. Amazing. Thank yeah, you. that does feel nice. Mind right? like, blown, mind blown. Especially after that really garbage intro. Outside of this, <laughs> outside of us, but um, as far as this question goes, you know, as soon as he started his question, I thought, no, I don't want them replacing the original Jurassic Park section that's there now. But if they build another park, then they can extend it and put Jurassic World there. Build. I think we talked about the monorail system connecting the two. But whenever he said about um, building Jurassic World over it and then having sections of the old Jurassic Park section as like old parts, he kind of convinced me that would be really, really cool, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I've kind of always wanted. I've wanted that like, uh, you know, version of Jurassic World that we saw where you have the nice clean park, but then you you go through the woods and all of a sudden you're in the old rundown area. I don't know how plausible it is. Especially for Islands of Adventure because it is a very tight park at the moment. There's not a lot of – there's not really much room at all for expansion at the moment. And, yeah, man, the problem is, like, there's just no room. I mean, they just took down uh, the Dueling Dragons ride, so they're building some more Harry Potter stuff over there. So that's out of the question. Um, the only thing I could think of, but, you know, Kong Skull Island really throws, you know, a wrench – a wrench? Throws them. A monkey throws. I always mess this. What is it? A monkey re- throws a monkey wrench, or is it just a wrench? He throws a monkey because throws... it's King Kong. Good yeah, pun. true. That's. I wasn't trying to be so punny, but Take it, it kind of worked yes, out. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so that that th- throws a wrench into the mix um, because it's in just such a poor spot for expansion for Jurassic Park. At least um, the only thing I could say is like that Toon Lagoon area. You know, but it's still it's that well, one ride messes up the whole I flow. Know. It's well, right on sec, the, the cusp of Jurassic Park. Wait a sec. What if they literally redid the entire Jurassic Park area, including the big ride and Camp Jurassic and the flyers and everything, except leaving the Discovery Center, but making that all old, like like he said. So that's like the old you, you come across the old portion of Jurassic Park, which is technically the old portion portion of the original Jurassic Park land which is super cool <laughs> and then but have the whole rest of it as Jurassic World like the whole thing just rip the yeah. whole thing out make it Jurassic World but have the Discovery Center like original Jurassic Park oldness that would be actually cool yeah you know that. I I think we may maybe touched on it a little bit about the the ride itself and how you know you know not as great as it could be it is currently and I mean right now it's actually under refurbishment but that's just a yearly thing uh, they replace some skins and just kind of touch up th- some things here and there. Uh, but it doesn't change fundamentally like how the ride operates or anything like that. Um, so that takes up quite a bit of 
like plot of land because of the the water aspects of it. It has to kind of weave in and out. So there is a bit if you were to completely rip that out, maybe you could put like uh, you know a new visitor center in that back corner near Skull Island and kind of obscure that area a little bit. Um, there's always talks about removing Trinidad flyers um, because it really is. I mean, both rides, honestly, are tough because, you know, the the big ride you can't really bring kids on and the small ride you can't bring adults on. So it's like, uh, what? Like, you know, there's no middle ground and it's kind of tough. And I feel like there should be middle ground. And I think this these parks specifically have been the thrill parks. But more recently, they've been kind of transitioning to include family aspects. So I think, uh, you know, changing both of those rides could be be something on the table eventually if they were to do that if they want to get more family friendly um and unfortunately that would mean like you know tearing down like the whole camp jurassic area which is really beautiful um trotted on flyers has some amazing views like that's a, a a neat little ride but you can't go on it without a kid so uh you know there's that but the whole if they were to like demolish the front aspect of uh the uh toon lagoon where the the, like the bilge bilge rat barges i think that's what is that what it's called uh like the yeah. water ride um that's just like um what do you call it like a tube water ride thing congo rapids or something like that um if they were to remove that and put a visitor center up there and like so you would have two visitor centers or i'm sorry innovation center and visitor center on the lagoon that would look really cool from yeah. across the way when you enter the park the Jurassic Park Visitor Center is amazing as it is from across the river or the lake. Um, but having two there could be really awesome. Um, so you could have like that there and then you could maybe – you could even fit like a simulator type ride sort of, um, you know, gyrosphere ride or something like that in vain of Kong Skull Island or something like that, like how that one's set up. So you could definitely fit that in there I think. But as far as like how you theme the back half, I, I feel like you'd have to go – like movie monsters or something to kind of fit that Skull Island thing. Yeah. And, and there's no chance that they're going to retheme that. I mean, that's not happening. I know. And that, that Kong ride would have been the perfect Jurassic ride. It's almost like they were, maybe this is true, that they were debating between should we do Kong or Jurassic because it could really go either way. It's like you're in yeah. a Jeep ride and there's there's trees and they, it, it really, there's dinosaurs in it because it's King Kong anyway. So it really could have went either way, I feel. And it would have been in such a great Jurassic ride. Yeah. There, there but, w- It was on the table. Like that's yeah. what the plan was. But I mean the but ride just... system though. Like it was oh, actually, well, yeah. it, looks, it looks like even the way it's set up, the, the mm-hmm. track, the layout, it looks like it could have it literally went yeah. either way. Yeah, I just last I, minute even either way. Yeah, unfortunately, like they decided on their plans before they realized how big of a hit Jurassic World was. Yeah. So yeah. that really. I just... hope they're kicking themselves because I'm kicking them mentally. Oh, absolutely, because they could have honestly, they could have devoted a whole quarter of the park to Jurassic. You know, and now they just have to expand elsewhere, like in the third, uh, fourth gate. Um, yeah, that water park's not a park. <laughs> <laughs> it is a beautiful looking park, though. I got to say, like the the Volcano Bay, uh, it is pretty beautiful looking. Yeah. Where is – I don't even know park. where is that located. I can't um, find it on the map here. Um, you passed it a bunch of times going into the park, so it's pretty close. I think it's right by Royal Pacific, right? Or it's where that Wet n' Wild was, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I see – Um. Yeah, they're, this map's just probably old um, because it actually – Skull Island doesn't even exist. It oh, says yeah, Skull Island, but it's just a so pile of dirt. It's a water park that was built after Skull Island. Yeah, so it's across the way, I guess. But, um, yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful place. And that – like, imagine that because you could see that from the other side. I'm, I'm sure if they had put some vistas in there, you could see this volcano. It could have tied perfectly into oh, Fallen man. Kingdom. Like, You're it, hurting me. I know, Literally. right? It would have been so amazing. Unfortunately, we're not getting that. But um, that I've always kind of wanted that. And I've thought maybe there's a chance like, you know, uh, what area is it? Um, is it like a stunt show or something in the other park? I forget. Fear Factor maybe? Um, yeah. Somewhere over there. That park's kind of hard to discern a little bit. Um, but um, – or I don't know. One of those areas. I always like joked about how – they have that tram ride from from Harry Potter to Harry Potter, you know, from uh, Diagon Alley to Hogsmeade. I just thought, how awesome would it be to have that monorail ride 
from yeah. Jurassic World to Jurassic Park. That would have been so cool. Um, and there, there's like little areas where they could build it. If you look at the map, like they could demolish some stuff and throw a, you know, a, a rail ride in there. That would have been awesome. But that's just too big of a project to kind of like squeeze in there. I don't, I, you know, I don't think they'll ever do that. But it would have been like really cool if it was possible. I mean, we gotta believe in a in a third park here and hope that they put Jurassic world in that third park and then i don't know if they'll connect them i don't think probably won't go that far i wish they would but no i mean i i guess that's all we got now yeah the and they've, park. they've been buying like a lot of land so mm-hmm. there's there's all kinds of plots on the table for them to expand and there's been talks of like everything from a full jurassic you know park like a full park like a no, not Jurassic Park, but Jurassic World, um, but a full you know get, full gate um, and everything from just a land to a full park. It's kind of a you know I don't know what the plan is at the moment. Now everything kind of comes on the table, goes off the table, and it's all in a mix. Especially because you know they have the Nintendo license. They're still trying to figure out like the whole thing with that. There's blueprints oh, for it, but there's that. also you know word of it moving around. So stuff is constantly changing. But yeah, I, I think we covered that one pretty well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on to the next one. Thanks, dude. Um, let's see. This one comes from Twitter. It's from Jaden at Ingen Hunter. It says, "Okay, my question is, if you could kill off any character or characters, who would it be and why?" <laughs> uh, what do you think? Well, I. <laughs> I'm not going to say Malcolm because people <laughs> will hate me. I had a feeling you would like go that route at least. Uh, you know? So I'm going to say, okay, now that I've seen the lost world, right? This has happened. It actually it yeah. happened. How do we not celebrate that a little bit in, in the beginning? Like that's <laughs> kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's a, it's so much, I feel like we've already celebrated it so much online. That's wow, true. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was a, that was a great round of a round of applause. Yeah. That was a great round. Yeah, um, great round. So <laughs> after that round, I have to say that that Sarah Harding girl, man, oh, man. I can't take her. I love I that you her. can't take her, but yet you voice her in a radio drama <laughs> every yeah, other week. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know who she was before I voiced it. Now I want to remove my voice. I want to re- revoke it, put a copyright <laughs> stamp, be like, nope. Can't use it. <laughs> you had no concept of who she was. So now, like, you yeah. approach the character much differently. And every other line would be like, you should kill me off. Yeah, that would be the underlining tone. Because I don't <laughs> like her at all. She makes the stupidest decisions known to man. She's, wow. like, cheesy and just so bad at her job huh. with no no depth. And I mean, she wore the, the jacket with the blood on it. Duh. She's an animal behaviorist lady. Like She should know that. Yeah. She's going up to the little baby stegosaurus. Like, I'm an animal behaviorist expert, but I'm going to go up to this baby dinosaur where the adults probably won't attack me. Like, that won't happen. I mean, she did so many stupid things. Yeah. That one. I mean, I can't, I can't, um, you know, make any excuses for some of those choices. I mean, the, the jacket, I sort of, could think like you know it was pretty traumatic what she went through um in the trailer and falling off the cliff and then climbing back up and eddie getting eaten so i can maybe forgive that decision because she's traumatized she's just like in a you know in a state of you know confusion and dazed and all that and maybe she just forgot you know like she's not thinking about oh what would a you know animal behaviorist do in this moment but the other one uh yeah i can't really forgive that too much but it doesn't bother me really um, I like her as a character, but I, I could, I could, you know, understand your your choice. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't. I can understand again the, those being scared of or being um, in shock of what happened. But still, if she's if her expertise is literally animal behavior, that should be at least ingrained in her instincts to know mm-hmm. what to do, like automatically without thinking about it. Because if that's what her expertise is, then she should just automatically know. Yeah, yeah, um, you're right. Eh, that's a good choice. Um, anyway, if, that's my choice. What's if, your choice? If I was to say Claire, what would you say? <gasps> Bye. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not my choice. <laughs> oh my gosh. I thought like we were going to stop being friends. Don't leave. Don't like, hang up. Ready to hit the block <laughs> button. I scared me. No, but um, I will say, I, I've sort of mentioned it before, but like Owen. I'm going to pick Owen. Okay. okay. I I just want I want some some real um tension and i want some real uh what do you call it um 
you know, consequences for Fallen Kingdom. Um, I, I just want it to feel real. And you kind of felt that in a lot of the other movies. You thought, like, any of these people can get, you know, you know, taken out at any time. Um, and you didn't necessarily feel that in Jurassic World. Um, you know, you kind of assume, like, oh, these are the two main characters. They're not going to die off. They're fine. Um, some of the other people, you're like, yeah, they could probably go. But I, I kind of want some more tension and, you know, I want to be scared and, and you know, uh, all that. So I would say Owen because that would be, like, one of those moments where you're like, oh, like, no, I can't believe that. Wow, no way. Did they just make that choice? Uh, like, that would so be... So you picked him for, like, a story suspense standpoint, not, like, a you're annoying, I hate you standpoint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't... Interesting. I don't really feel like I have any of those people that no, I, you know I care that much I about. Got, like, I got you on that because it's true. I mean, like, especially at the end of the series, like if they killed him off or killed Claire, oh my gosh. Yeah. And I think like it would, it would make that whole arc for Claire a lot better, you know, because she's gone through so much and she, be, she becomes, it seems like a new person in this movie in a way. Um, I mean, I don't know yet, but, and I, I think, like a change like this could bring her to a new level and, you know, have women inherit the earth in the third movie, you know, like it could be fully her movie in a new way. And I think that would be really awesome. Like, wow. you know, nothing against Chris Pratt. I love Owen. I think he's, he's fun and, and cool and all that. But like, I just think that would be best, best for Claire and Claire hasn't really gotten her due diligence, you know, with all the, you know, stuff that, you know, the hate everybody gave her the first movie. I think that'll be a lot corrected in this movie, but um, I'd like to see her take it even a step further. Wow, that that would actually be insane. I don't know. They would they would never kill him off. Like, I, I know, can't right? See like, it. I, I can't either. But at the same time, like, I know he's he's going to be you know, he's a he's a super action star at the moment. He's you know, he's got so many films in, in his, you know, lineup and the whole Avengers thing, whether that like, whether his storyline, I don't know where it's going, whether it's winding up or down or in the middle or I don't know, but like he he's going to be busy, I think. And they, you know, the Marvel franchise talks about how uh, phase three or whatever they're going on. I don't know, four, I don't know how many phases they're on, whatever they are. Um, the next step in that progression of movies um it's going to be cosmic is what they talk about. It's going to be more like guardians of the galaxy and all that. And, and Thor, I guess like that kind of style. So if they were to maybe make Chris Pratt, the lead of the, of the series, instead of like Robert Downey Jr. Or uh, Chris Evans, um, I think that could be, you know, open him up to leaving Jurassic franchise in a way. So there's real world consequences as well. I think. I don't think I mean no, I don't think that's gonna happen at all. I really don't <laughs> I don't think I so really either, don't. but, I can't but see for, that. as for like a shock value and uh story and all that, I would like to see it kinda happen. Yeah, I get that point. Yeah, I, I think it would be it would be good. Because, you know, even TV and that, when you watch it and they, they have one of those big moments where where they kill someone that's really integral in the story and you're it just really gets you and that is that's very big it's impactful so yeah. yeah i get what you're saying and heck i you know that you know i would love a claire centric finally <laughs> but still <Yeah. laughs> even then i mean i don't know yeah it's, yeah. it's hard I it would know. it would be uh you know a new thing and just like where do we go from here and it would be interesting i think and fun and so much speculation as to where the third film would go like in that but a lot of step. people would be like well i'm done like they sign off and they're done they don't care yeah i know right like a lot of people come for chris pratt but also a lot of people say he wasn't the best in that movie as well. So who who knows really where the, where people are headed? It, it'll be interesting to see what the reaction is to this movie. So um, that's my choice. <laughs> interesting choice. <laughs> uh, let's move on here. Uh, well, thanks, Jaden. But uh, the next one comes from Reed Benjamin, and this was a submission on our website. So this is a, a little different. Let's uh, let's read this one. It says, "Hey there." This is probably going to come off, uh, come across a little unusual, but hear me out. My name is Reed Benjamin. I'm a rapper from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm also a lifelong Jurassic Park enthusiast. I've read the novels 15 to 20 times each, as well as seen the movies countless times. I've always wanted to do something to tie in Jurassic Park to my music. Yesterday, I released an album called Life Finds a Way, containing Jurassic Park references and metaphors for everyday life, hence the album title. 
I don't know if you have any interest in hip hop, but I wanted to share this album with fellow JP fans around the world. Feel free to, uh, feel free to share it with everybody. Um, and that's from Reed Benjamin and he's Reed Benjamin on all social media. So go check him out. But, uh, uh, Jen, what kind of music are you into? Are you into uh, hip hop or anything like that? Well, I'll I'll tell you, I'm not into that. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, same that's here. That's one thing I'm not into. But I don't know. I mean, I could respect it. I respect the art to it. I know it's hard to rhyme things. So, <laughs> good job there. Yeah, I uh, know. I I I'm on the same page. Like I I'm not really into hip hop too much. I can appreciate like you know well made music and all that, mm-hmm. and and especially something with Jurassic Park references. I kind of. It doesn't matter really what kind of music is it is. I just love to hear those those kinds of references. I've actually come across some Jurassic Park raps or, you know, uh, what do you call it? Like some sort of like uh, dance music or something like that or anything that ha- kind of ties in like the music or, you know, vocal performance and like the style or themes of the the, the words and all that. So I'm super into to finding out more and I'm definitely going to look him up and see what he's all about. Um, but I figured I'd mention that for everybody who kind of uh, is maybe into into uh, hip hop and wants to find out more. So that's Reed Benjamin. Life finds a way. He, it said in the in the email here or whatever that uh, it came out yesterday. But this I got this a little while back, so it's already on there. So find it. I'm sure you can find it on you know iTunes or you know Spotify or whatever. So yeah, go check that out, everybody. But let's move on here. Um, I got another voicemail. And this one is from Veronica. Woo! Hey, guys. It's me, Veronica. (laughs) Happy New Year. I didn't really get to tell you guys last time just because I was sick, so I didn't get a chance to call. But anyways, I am now here calling you guys. And, you know, I had a question for you, Brad. Um, Do you just sit there and listen to the phone ring? (laughs) <laughs> or like, do, do you like hesitate to go answer it? I just want to know how that works. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. It rings for a while, and I just <laughs> wanted to know if you like are tempted to grab it half the time. Maybe it's a burner phone. No, you're not a drug dealer. <laughs> Maybe it's just like a phone that you put on vibrate. I don't know. I was rambling and curious. <laughs> but anyways, so I had a thought for you guys. Um, as you know. With all the trailer and the hype that's been coming out, there are questions uh, pertaining to the new movie. And while I was reading this article, um, like it said five burning questions to the prequel or sequel or not prequel, the sequel to Jurassic World. And it was just um, the question was, does Malcolm want the dinosaurs to go extinct? You know, um, seeing as we see him in the... uh, trial i suppose that is you know like i know that we don't know much of what is going on there it's only like just clips of things that we can only possibly imagine um but i just wanted to know like you know he is talking about how these creatures were here before us and if like we're not careful they're going to be here after us you know um something that his chaos theory is always advocating about life finding a way and everything. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Like, do you think that Malcolm is over these, like, you know, dazzling dinosaurs that you think that he, sh- like, it's time for them to be put to rest? Like, you know, that was actually a pretty interesting question because, like, I don't know. I feel like he... I don't know. I feel like he might be in between, but like every time I see Jurassic Park 1 or The Lost World, I feel like he's also really over the dinosaurs and, you know, just maybe doesn't want to deal with them. But like, you know, I don't know. He hasn't been really dealing with them. Um, Well, in the books, he does. But anyways, that's not that's not the moral of the story here. I am just curious to get you guys' thoughts. Like always, I ramble so much and i know that this is the way we work we ramble we kind of get our point and we kind of answer it anyways yep it's a short and sweet question let me know what you guys think about that and i will talk to you guys on the next jurassic mailbag and um, oh my gosh she's saying it i was gonna do my vlog and that's when my voicemail cut her off and, oh, no. and she responded again. I think she tried like a few times or something. I don't know what happened. Brad, here. this is Veronica. And I just wanted to inform you that your voicemail is an a- 
and did not <laughs> like me because this has happened for the second time. Anyways, what I was just trying to say was, you know what? I don't even remember. You know what? I love you guys. All right? That's all I wanted to say, but the voice mother didn't want me to. Okay? Have a good week, guys, and I'll talk to you in the freaking next Jurassic Mailbag. Get that voicemail fixed, Brad. <laughs> That'll be the last time this happens. All right. Veronica out. Oh, my God. That is incredible. And wow. I, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going I mean, look, I think it, like, cuts it off at, like, three minutes, so... Uh, it's yeah, I can't control it. I'm sorry. And about the whole, um, uh, what do you call it? Like about uh, whether it rings or not. So it's like a, a Google line or whatever. So it doesn't ring um, on my phone. It, I think it used to, or you can make it or something. I don't have it ringing on my phone. I used to get like a text with the transcription, but it, it doesn't do that anymore. Um, but if my computer's open and I'm on my Google account, Sometimes like this random phone like just starts ringing. I'm like, what? What is that? What's happening right now? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, oh! Somebody's calling. Somebody's calling the voicemail. And I like, I, I like, don't know what to do. So I like sit there. I like don't move. I'm like, I don't want to answer it. Like, uh, I don't, want, I don't know who it is. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've always thought about like hitting, hitting the button and just like pressing, you know, the pickup. I don't know what would happen to be honest. I've never tried it. Might have to try it sometime. So. Uh, be warned, Veronica. Next time, I might just pick up in the middle of it, and you'll be like, ah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. But uh, <laughs> sorry about that whole email or voicemail thing. I know my voicemail is a big jerk, but uh got to get past it somehow. I like that she understands what we do here. So you just like you ramble, ramble. I know how it works. She's ramble a little bit, get to a point, ramble some more. That's how we do it. <laughs> yep, yep. She's got it down. She knows. She's uh she calls in basically every every month. So uh, yeah, she knows what we're up to. Great. But um, as far so as the question, the question, it was um, uh, where like where do we think uh, Malcolm stands in this whole thing? Does he want the dinosaurs uh, to live or to die? What do you think? I mean, we, oh, we might have touched on this a little bit. He wants yeah. them gone. Gone, gone. I think so. Um, do you have any different place. perspective? Uh, it doesn't seem like it after the Lost World. Oh, let me think back now. Now that I have that knowledge in my brain folds, let me think. <laughs> I don't remember. Wait. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. No, like, there's I no... think he still like wants them gone. Yeah. I don't think yeah. there's any aspect of that movie where he's caring for the dinosaurs really aside from like uh, uh the time when they let them out i don't he didn't really he wasn't involved in the letting out was he i forget um maybe but he doesn't really care i feel like about the dinosaurs and he wrote about them and we heard about that in jurassic park 3 you know he's he's just preachy everything's you know chaos chaos whatever um, yeah, he, he's probably going to do another let nature run its course thing like oh it's given another shot to destroy them kind of deal yeah i mean i like, i always i always thought maybe like he'll flip the script a little bit and and just like all of a sudden he'll be like I, i've come to a you know a new conclusion over these past few years like i actually think all life should be saved or something like that and he's maybe with claire or something trying to save these so uh, that doesn't seem to be the case whatsoever um yeah i don't I, know if i would buy that no i it would be it would take a lot of explaining i think to to realize like where he stands now that whole like i know I, I mentioned it before but that loot crate campaign really threw me for a loop when they had the guy impersonating him and mm -hmm. talking about saving the dinosaurs so it was like he was on in the dinosaur essentially in the dinosaur protection group like in in a way like that's what that whole campaign was about from loot crate um but I don't know. I, I, I don't think he'll be like that at all. I think now now I've kind of like have that in my mind, like that he he really does sound like, you know, if we're not careful, dinosaurs will take over the earth and destroy us all. That's the way I'm kind of viewing it now. Like, yeah. So we have to let nature run its course or else, you know, our time is up. I would like to see him be a, a pain in the butt for Claire, though, when her whole protection thing like him i don't like he's not probably in it that much but i would like to see maybe him have some kind of power over something and maybe he's not in it but his people are or something or a company he runs or something like that to kind of keep stopping her mission somehow 
Yeah, like him he, just be an annoyance. Kind he of just thing. has he runs the anti DPG, right? Like it's just <laughs> yeah, like, something like he that. tries to block her with every move, you know, she makes. That would be interesting. Like not necessarily a villain, but like villainous in a way, like, you know, because at this point we all probably want, you know, the dinosaurs saved. We're a bunch of dinosaur fans. Like we don't want them to die. But you know, somebody like Malcolm would, so it would be interesting to to have him be villainous in a way, and not evil or anything, but just like the the antagonist, I guess. I guess. Yeah, in that and like sense. enough that you can see his point too. Like you could see all the points; they make valid points, and you're of just course. like, I don't know, I don't know where to go. Yeah, I mean, the point of saving human race is pretty valid. I mean, like he <laughs> yeah. has a point. Like you probably <laughs> should save us. You know, I mean, but is. It's always it's always risky. I mean, like, do you kill that one thing to save everybody else? Uh, it's it's tough. I don't know, but you know they've got a tough choice to make, and I, I think I know what their choice is, honestly. But <laughs> uh, whether it, you know it works out or not, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, but I, I that would be cool. I, I like that. I hope he does that. I hope he's like that anti annoying thorn in her side. That'd be neat. Yeah. Thanks, Veronica. That was awesome. Uh, Love you too. So thanks for calling in just about every month and keep rambling, you know, like ramble on next (laughs) month. (laughs) It's what we do here. (laughs) So uh, this next one comes from uh, Andres says, uh, let's see. So I was chatting with my sister the other day and I told her that maybe Universal Pictures got their synopsis wrong because it has been three years since 2015, not four as it says. And just to remind people the listing uh, to all this Oh, wait, what is this saying? Man, uh, here I, here we go. Messed up. And just to <laughs> remind the people listening to this, all Jurassic movie storylines happen in the year it releases. Anyway, this discussion grew so big that it got my friends into the night. Um, as a joke, I told them that it's all a matter of perspective. But if so, all birthdays have to change and we should not count the moment that we're born as a year and not after. Um, I don't know what's happening, but I, I like his point. Me neither. I think, I think here, I'll get to it after. But uh, what do you think about this? Do you think Universal is wrong? Uh, do you think it's okay for fans that the new movie storylines won't happen the year it's released, or is or it's totally wrong because it could be right for the story, but maybe some fans will be upset for this. I think I could adapt, but it will make the movies a little less special, in my opinion. Thanks and stay awesome. Um, all right, so what I think he's trying to say here is, um, you know, in the synopsis for Fallen Kingdom, it says, like, it's been four years since the incident, you know, um, at Jurassic World. And he's saying that ev- all these movies take place essentially, like, the year that they come out. So... Um, and I and, like that they do. I, yeah. I get him. I like that they do. I like that <laughs> the same amount of time has passed between every movie. And when they did say the four years, I, I don't know. I don't I don't know why. They must have a really, really, really good reason because I liked the time that stayed consistent. Actually, I, I kind of wish it would just come right after the next movie. I want to see like the, the fallout of all this problems from the legal stuff, but they're not probably going to go there since so much time has passed. It's all over with, I guess. But man... I, I was hoping for the three years, I got to say. But I guess they have a yeah. good reason. I guess. I, I wonder what the reason is. I mean, he mentioned the whole, like, the birthday thing. So, you know, when you're born, you're not automatically one year old. You know, you're you're one you know one month or zero days, essentially. Yeah. But, like, you, you progress to that one year on your first birthday. So he's just trying to say, like, he's trying to explain it to himself and to kind of talk through it, I guess. But so if Jurassic World... Um, It came out in 2015. It didn't take place in the same time period, um, you know, because it came out in June. But it is essentially like a Christmas movie. It takes place, uh, I think Colin said, a week after Christmas. So 2015, I believe Christmas was on a Thursday. Which, why would they set it that way anyway? Why don't they just make it in June? Why would he set it? I don't know. Um, Not really sure, to be honest. I don't know what... I don't know what the point was, really. Um, that always takes me out of it, too. Like, not uh, not really in Jurassic World. I don't really care that much. But, like, any movie that takes place around Christmas and just has, like, one scene, I'm like, oh, really? Like, we had to do that, like, one random thing. 
Um, yeah. And then it makes it like tough to watch like other times of the year. <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't affect anything. It didn't really. I mean, unless you say, oh, the kids are out of school for a week and then they're guess, visiting yeah. over Christmas or whatever. But that still doesn't make sense because they can they're out of school in the summer, too. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I mean, it's like Disney. You don't really want to go in the middle middle of summer. Right. I mean, it's like super crowded, really hot. <laughs> So, you know, I like to go in December. Like, I'm going to go in December this year. So it makes sense. (laughs) But, uh, no, I don't know. There's really no explanation as far as I can tell. Maybe there's – maybe Colin has said something. I don't don't remember. I don't know. Um, But – so it takes place a week after Christmas. I believe he did say that somewhere on Twitter or something, Um, which would be actually 2016. That is the first day of the year um, Mm. if I I had did my math right. Um, So – Te- technically, I, I guess that would take place 2016, um, but we can just assume 2015. But it still doesn't – like the math doesn't add up even if it is trying to like fit that three-year gap. Like it just doesn't work that way because we have 15, 16, 17, 18. If you count it like that, like he's saying, you have to count the full year of 2015 to get to four years for it to be 2018. Um so that mm. doesn't – I don't know. I, I don't know what the, the choice is um, unless, unless – no, because I, I think we have that timeline, right? There's I have it. Um, I believe the timeline said it took place in 2015. So – but like if it took place de- December 2014 and then a week later it's 2015, January 1st, that could work. But I don't I don't think that's what happened. I think it was, you know – the first day of 2016 maybe um but man this is yeah. too much math i don't know what's happening anymore um that was just rambling i, I, don't, I don't, don't really know that i don't like that they did that and i don't know about this whole four-year thing i just hope they have a really good reason and they explain that somewhere in there and why it's four years i mean for me i don't really care like that it takes place uh outside of whatever year it is like that doesn't bother me um, because, you know, I'll watch a movie set 40 years in the future. I'll watch a movie set in the past. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll watch a movie three made days a from point, now. Like, though. Jurassic's been making a point to count time, a real life as time. They've done it until now. I mean, to ruin that just by a year. <laughs> like, couldn't they just say three? Like, would that extra year really matter? I hope it does for them to add it on because – for now, and then even when the next one comes out, time will be really warped and out of sorts. Because then we'll have who knows how much time in between, and and then it won't even be close to the pattern we've been in at all. It doesn't yeah. bother me, but I don't know. <laughs> it is interesting. It's an interesting choice. I'm looking forward to see if they mention anything about it. I don't know if they will, but like it's not usual that like somebody's like, oh, it's 2018. Or, you know, it's 2019, whatever year they're, you know, it's supposedly taking place. Um, so they don't usually do that kind of thing. So we'll see if it well, actually, but they like, might say They might say, like, four years ago this happened or we needed four sure. years to make this. Like, they might reference it that way. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. I don't necessarily – I don't think, like, the synopsis was wrong. I mean, there's a, there's a good chance it could have been, I guess, but – um, yeah, I mean, there was that whole thing about Lowry being in one of the synopsises that they came out with. Like they said that he was in the cast, but then they kind of retracted it and said he wasn't in the cast. And so people have said he's not in it. So there, yeah, there's a precedent for, you know, errors, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't think they would make us that mistake though. I don't, I don't know. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe fans will be upset about it, and maybe you know we can't really do anything about it. So there's that. <laughs> I mean, I get it though. I mean, not really upset, but more like a disappointment of oh, it's kind of the tradition of Jurassic to do it this way, and now they're breaking it for no reason. Maybe I don't know, but I can't say that yet. But um, but yeah, I get it. I do get. It. I can get a little bit of disappointment and confusion because it's it's kind of Jurassic's thing to go with time. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, it'll make 2019 real special, I guess. <laughs> like, we'll have like, we'll be, we'll, we'll be like, um, all right. So, Fallen Kingdom took place, you know, June, blah blah blah, whatever date. Uh, so, so you know, when June 2019 comes, we'll be like, 
Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Day. Let's all celebrate. Oh my celebrate. gosh, that's actually like, awesome. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm getting married on June 22nd, 2019. So can it be there, that day? There it is. That's that's the <laughs> that day. So, celebrate. So epic. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be. So maybe maybe that's it. Maybe that's a special day. Maybe they did it for you. I mean, there's I a possibility. So. Um, I, I would like to think they do. <laughs> they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I really don't know. So that's uh, that's the best I can come up with. But uh, let's move on. Thanks, man. Um, this one comes from Instagram. It's uh, well, not from Instagram, I guess. But, you know, Instagram reached out to us. They're like, we got a question about Jurassic Park. <laughs> yes, um, Instagram. So <laughs> it comes from Jurassic.cc on Instagram. So uh, this one says, what do you think of the new Blu-rays that recently came out in stores? The ones with the new horrendous artwork and the newly announced Blu-ray Steelbooks, both sets with weird colored logos. The steels are all black with the logo in the center, and on the back sits the tagline from each movie. Probably the most boring steel sets ever made. And of course, the JP fans are the ones getting this treatment, as usual. It feels like they spent 10 minutes designing all of these, and there's a 4K release for the first time uh, coming out at the same time in May, but no artwork has been shown yet. I really hope they go back to classic Jurassic with this release, especially when it's JP's 25th anniversary. What do you think they'll do? A masterpiece or a total disaster? That's a good question. Hmm. Did you uh, ch- did you happen to see any of those those? Covers. Yeah, I saw the uproar. I saw the big all this, but you know what? I I lost faith in them whenever they put the motorcycle raptors on the cover of the main Jurassic case, Jurassic mm-hmm. World case. I I yeah. just they they lost it for me there. I'm like, fine, do whatever you want at this point because they've always had the nice logo, every single one until that point, and they had to put Chris Pratt and his his motorcycle on there, and I don't know, that broke me. So I don't care. That was it. They they ruined their reputation for covers at that point. For me. It's like at this point, whatever. Who cares? It's like you yeah. already messed it up. Like <laughs> it's tough because there there's a there's like a fundamental like I don't know like a you know a flaw in the way they create marketing materials and all this stuff uh, for this series. It's very confusing. Um, really doesn't make much sense. And and it kind of like he said it. it it seems like they spent 10 minutes on a lot of this stuff. Like, uh, I don't know. I mean, the, the logos have an issue going all the way back to like Jurassic Park 3. Um, the, the logo for The Lost World is is epic. It, you know, rivals the first one. The, the first one's just a classic logo, very simple. The, the Lost World is incredible logo. Jurassic Park 3, they did like the whole Spinosaurus or baryonyx looking, you know, dinosaur in the front. Um, there Which was like I some, liked, actually, yeah. for the record. I uh, like that. Me too. Me too. And I think I think it should have stayed that way. Um, and they've changed it since. They've kind of gone the Jurassic Park route and gone with the original style of logo. But, you know, it's still a little theme towards Jurassic Park 3, but not as much as it was. Uh, but it has just a T-Rex on it. So technically for that movie, it makes zero sense, you know, to have a T-Rex logo, but I understand it from a franchise perspective. Like you kind of want it to be uniform. And, and that's what they're doing now is, is for a lot of these logos, they're making them uniform to Jurassic world. So now all these logos are not the simplistic, you know, Jurassic park. It's not the nice stylized lost world. They're all, they're all metallic or slate. They've got that like slate feel that Jurassic world's logo had, um, kind of looks like it's made of rock in a way or, or, or you know, something like that. So they're kind of going that route with all the logos and, and have changed them all up. Um, so it's interesting uh, from that perspective alone, they're very shiny and glossy. Um, they change the colors like the, the, there's like a straight, uh, you know, because they change the front of the logo. It's no longer black. It's it's slate or gray like like the Jurassic World logo. The Lost World logo looks just like the Jurassic World logo, just different mm-hmm. words. Um, yeah, I thought that was weird. The Jurassic Park three one is is now like gold or or like ambery yellow or something like that. Um, and then the, the horrendous artwork makes no sense whatsoever. And I no, don't it's like, understand. It's like someone someone kind of put these logos and everything together with just the Jurassic World in their head, and they're like, you know, we'll just make something that looks cool. Like probably they don't didn't take a, an account of the history or what's actually in the film or anything. They're just like, you know what, this looks cool. This is actiony. It's a cool color. We'll just make it like this. 
They probably didn't yeah. account for the film itself. I I guess. I mean, like the, the Jurassic Park one has um, the T Rex breakout scene where Grant's waving the flare, but it's not even the same. It, it's like they re you know remade it and and made it look so bad. Like it, the T Rex mm-hmm. looks horrible. Looks so wonky. Grant is in uh, the wrong spot. Um, and it's just like everybody's in the wrong spot. It's just so messed up looking. And Grant's not even looking at the Rex. He's looking somewhere else. Yeah, that's and weird too. the Lost World one has like the, the Stegosaurus stampede. Um, that one's – no, I won't say that. But um, it, it, the Stegosauruses are, are like – monster sized like they're just way too big the scale's way off um and then if on the back of that one everybody's pointing out i forget who did it initially um somebody pointed out that the beak is like essentially just a triangle like it's not even like yeah i saw that uh, i don't know what happened there but it's like (laughs) it's ridiculous the jurassic park 3 one is not so so bad it's it's got the whole like billy outrunning like a pteranodon which is kind of cool um but it's a very stylized version of it um so it's weird. It's very strange. And, it, you know, like for the 25th anniversary, we need something better. And that's just really unfortunate yeah. that it looks like that. It's I like, don't like it's it. like they took a, a still, like whatever still they had for each film and just threw it on there and just played with it a little bit and revamped yeah. the Jurassic World logo. And like, here we go. It's yeah. Easy. And then the steel books, um, steel books are, they're just, you know, they're, they're just standard. Like there's nothing to them. They just have like those same logos, the very slate looking logos, um, and then all black. And they have those like, you know, s- taglines or whatever. And it, even Jurassic Park 3 has a very uh, interesting tagline. I believe it, that's very small. Something um, unexpected has evolved. I think that's what it says. Um, mm. So like what? What is that? What, yeah, what does that even mean? What does that mean? What? I don't know. Like, if you take into fact headcanon, like, maybe that's what they did. Maybe they listened to the podcast and they're like, oh, there's this whole theory. Like, they must have put that in a movie that the Spinosaurus is a hybrid. It's like the first of evolution of the hybrids. Like, we always talk about. Like, that would be a really cool thing if they implemented into the true canon. Like, that's why the Spinosaurus was so crazy and outlandish and all this stuff, because it evolved. It was a new creature, a new being. So that would make sense. But that tagline doesn't make sense to that movie on the surface. Um, it's very, very weird. But um, they have an adventure, 65 uh, million years in the making. Something has survived and the park is open for the rest. So, yeah, they're uninspired. The artwork on the inside is is good. Like, it's just screenshots, essentially, from the movies. Um, I mean... I'd forgive that all if they would just put on amazing features or like extra footage or just all kinds of cool things like that. Man, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. That that artwork is so bad though on the others. I don't know if I would like <laughs> – I don't want to be seen walking out of a store with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. It's true. It's true. But yeah, I don't know. For 4K, I, I like you said, I hope they come out with – a masterpiece. I don't expect them to, but um, there's so many yeah. great artists out there that if you just said like, "Hey, like, come up with something," like they would come up with something way better in ten seconds or ten minutes. You know, like they could come up with a way better design than any of these things. And I they're mean, not they could have done like a contest or something and had yeah. people design them, Anything. and that would have been excellent. Yeah, but that's not the case. So. We'll have to wait and see if the you know anything comes of the 4K. I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, though. I probably will not be purchasing these unless there's like Jurassic Park deleted scenes or something. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, let's um. Let's move on to the next one here. This is um a voicemail from Caleb. Giving it a second. Play. Come on. Come on. You hear that? Yeah.
Hi, Brad and Jen. It's Caleb. I'm sitting at my piano right now and um, just wanted to uh, play you guys something before I asked my question. Um, but anyway, That's my so question awesome. is oh, what am I you crying? expect out of the Super Bowl commercials on Sunday? Do you think the Patriots will win? Do you think the Eagles will win? <laughs> or do you think Jurassic World will win? Because I think Jurassic World is going to win. But uh, anyway... Um, would love to hear you guys speculate about that. And uh, I think you guys are awesome. Keep doing what you do. Awesome. That is so Oh, man. Cool. This is where you paced our previous conversation and where we had a whole talk about this before we recorded. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I think we owe it to Caleb oh, to kind of give like a, a I new to, one. I like, wipe my tears away. Is it bad that that um, it immediately brings tears to my, my eyes when someone plays that music? I know. Like, it's just bad. Like, I need a tissue. And Ugh. that that arrangement was fa- I don't know like what yeah. arrangement that was if that was in the because uh, I have that book you know the piano book um, I I can't play like Caleb can but uh, I bought it anyway <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have I have a piano like a, a uh, keyboard right behind me but like no talent whatsoever so um, <laughs> but that was that was awesome and I kind of like I drifted off and I was just like I put both he- uh ears on on my uh my headphones i'm like mm, both is... ears on good yeah good both to have ears. both ears on <laughs> i can't like i said i can't talk with both ears on my headphones i'm like what's happening i i just end up doing british accents horribly but oh that was i lost it like i was like i was just like lost in in you know thought there that was that was like, fantastic I was like in tears just in tears. and then that nice transition in the middle into the old music oh my gosh bye oh yeah bye. seriously <laughs> i'm done i don't even know i think i mean I th- like Every every month, Caleb. Every month, oh, new so new new arrangements, new new music. Do it, please. Oh, that was so amazing. Good. That was so good. Um, Dude, I needed that. I needed yeah. that therapy. As far as the uh, the trailers go, what to expect from the trailers from the Super Bowl? Well, this is this is airing the day after, so. That was a great Super Bowl. I loved it. I you remember? I loved it. I'm so glad the Eagles won. Oh that my god! was so good when they won. Oh my gosh, that was so good. When the Patriots somehow got negative points, I didn't that, know that oh was my God. possible. Who knew? Who knew that would happen? That oh, that's so crazy. That um, the trailers, oh, they were terrible. I can't believe it. I can't. I'm just. Ugh. What didn't you like <laughs> about the trailer, Brad? What did you not like about it? I can't believe What's they your... killed Owen off in the trailer. Like, oh. save that for the movie. Like, oh, I want to see that when I'm in the th- seat in the theater. How could you kill him off in the trailer? I can't. Okay. I can't believe Malcolm killed him. I was what? not expecting that. I did not expect that. Like. I, did, that, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. I didn't think that would happen. And. Uh, I can't believe it. I can't believe Jeff was in there for like three seconds just to come in, kill him and leave. And it was. was it? it was in the courtroom too. It's so weird. Like. Oh my yeah. God. Why would you do that? And why did he have like a little pet dinosaur with him? Like how in the Lego, remember how Claire has her little pet? Mm-hmm. Why yep. did Why did Malcolm have a little dinosaur there? I didn't. I didn't expect that because we thought like he was all against the dinosaurs, and it turns out he's all for the dinosaurs. I cannot believe yeah. it. How is that Even possible? Ha- like, just this movie's blowing our expectations out of the water. How did that happen? I I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And you know what? That was only like the thirty second trailer. So yeah, wow. There's a lot. There was so much to take in, and we're gonna have to sift through it for another episode. But whew. so I can't believe it. any speculation we give at this point is just gonna sound ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you copy and paste our old our first our first conversations. We talked a little about about this earlier. So what what did we say? We were like. It's probably going to be maybe two forty-five seconds or three thirty seconds. I believe we said that, or, or one ninety second. We don't know. Like yeah. at this point, and um, wow, I can't get that image out of my head now. I don't remember what we initially said. Um, I think that's the way it's going to happen. Truly, so <laughs> yeah, it probably will. It probably will. <laughs> what did we say? I don't, I don't um, know. I don't remember. We we just kind yeah, of like. I don't know. We wanted it. This is so dumb after the fact, but uh, I wanted to see more. No, no, no. I don't want to see anything. We didn't want to. That was what we said. We didn't want to see anything. That was what we said. Um, And I kind of assumed it would be a lot like what we saw already, except extended upon those 
action beats because it's the Super Bowl and you kind of want to thrill people. You don't want to like lull them to sleep with some like intimate scene. So I expect uh, big stuff. Yeah, and I think I, I mentioned how I don't want anything from the second half of the film. So if they just want to keep showing stuff like extensions of what we've already seen, I don't really want to see a fresh scene. I don't want to see a fresh moment of the film. I, I wouldn't mind with like little bits and pieces extensions of what we've seen. I really don't want to be spoiled anymore. I'm done. I don't want to be spoiled. Stop showing me things. <laughs> I'm just done. Did we, did we get it right? I'm going to ask myself that on Monday when I listen back to this and I'm like, you're an idiot. You got it completely wrong. Way to go. Now everybody's out there listening to this laughing at you. So if they weren't already because they probably have been if they didn't already shut it off. Somehow they made it an hour and they haven't wow. shut it off. They need a medal, an award. So we need like we need an award um, online thing of people who like check in after they listen and be like, you deserve an award. Yeah, four square for podcasts. Check in. That sounds like a good idea. Maybe we should. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. I should copyright that. Did, I already did it, guys. Copyrighted it. Made a website already. Building it. <laughs> so thanks, Caleb. <laughs> Hopefully, our expectations are, are on par. I don't know, but um, within those rambles, there's a point somewhere. And somewhere then there's more rambles. This, how we do. This next one is an email from Master Builder One Six Four. And uh, it says, hey, it's me, Master Builder. I want to ask you, what is the biggest plot hole or something that didn't make sense in all the Jurassic movies? Um, I feel like we touched on that last time. San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. Diego. Biggest plot issue of my life. Why? (sighs) Well. um, Why, Jen? Okay. Okay. We didn't have to talk about this very much. No, I think think we talked about something – like this, a uh, similar, oops, hit the mic, cool, um, a sim- similar topic last time, I think. You're just think. so excited and angry that you just hit the oh, mic. Gosh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, what, what's the deal with San Diego? What's your problem? Well, after, after I've seen it, um, I, I talked about this in that other podcast that I did with that other dude. The Missing Compies? Yes, thank you, that one. I talked just in depth about, because it was like fresh out of my viewing, maybe a couple of days after, and, and um, I kind of talked about it there. But my issue with, this, with the San Diego thing, if, if I can recall, because I already blocked out on my mind, they're, they're in that helicopter, and they're, they're going, and um, they're off the island, and then all of a sudden, like a day has passed, time has passed, because their clothes are different, and time has passed, but nobody was prepared for this boat, really, and then like having a little weird press conference thing by the dock at night and then there's no like tranquilizing people around like just in case something bad could have happened they're bringing a dinosaur to mainland and like no one's prepared for it and then malcolm and the whatevers come to the to the um boat dock there and they look surprised to see a boat like they're shocked that all this is happening and like but you've apparently had a day at least to prepare and you know it's coming if you're here and i don't know that whole thing was weird to me it's like nobody was ready all right so so here's the thing they look shocked because the boat is is plowing into a dock i mean i'd kind of look shocked too i think but um yeah they just look extra shocked at that point. <laughs> oh my god a boat's gonna hit the dock what <laughs> and and then there's no security but again this is in jam and they're horrible. Like, they do not prepare correctly. So, uh, yeah, I, I can forgive them for being idiots for that reason. Um, as far I as the, the timeline, the timeline, I don't really, I never really thought of it that way. I don't really, that never bugs me. I, I think, like, they're on the plane, it's night time, or the helicopter, it's night in Costa Rica, right? Or outside of Costa Rica. Um, uh Honestly, don't know where that is in perspective to <laughs> San Diego. Uh, uh, trying to think. Nope, don't know. So that's what you get here. Real thought out, you know, stuff. I know, I know our geography really well. Um, but um, so, I, yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure it took them not that long to get there. But the boat would have taken a little bit longer. So let's assume a day, you, you know, even if it was more uh, two days. But, yeah, so it, it just got there the next night. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. They, they had time to change their clothes once they got back. Um, and then they're like, let's go to this dock and, and kind of sneak by and, and, you know, get in there. And then, uh-oh, let's leave because it's going to come through the, the fence and, and, you know, destroy everything. Um, so I don't really have any problems with that. Um, 
it just seemed weird to me. I don't know. First time viewer, first time going all the way through watching it in order. It just didn't feel flowy enough. I mean, I guess yeah. if you really think about it, you can kind of justify, but it just felt jolting. Like, I was kind of with it for the most part. And then when they're on the helicopter and stuff, and all of a sudden I'm like, wait, what? Whoa, what are we doing? Where did this come from again? Like, what happened here? I, I just felt like something was amiss there, and it just kind of jolted me the wrong way. I don't know. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, it was kind of an add-on. You know, it wasn't really meant to be the original ending. Yeah, so. it felt like an add-on. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it kind of, yeah, it definitely feels that way, but I, I love it as it is. I love the whole San Diego sequence. So, well, I guess this isn't a knock on the sequence. This might just be like a knock on the, the transition um, part. The, yeah, like the transition, like the, it's weirdly conjointed and it doesn't really flow. I guess that's that's like my plot hole. That that okay. flowy point there is yeah. my plot hole. Okay, um, a plot hole or something that didn't make sense. Um, hmm, well, I, uh, can I just say the entire Lost World movie? Oh. But I, I'll just stick with that no. spot no. there. Um, I don't know. I don't plot hole or something that doesn't make sense i bet uh, there's a lot of these you just have to really think about it yeah i guess but like i really don't care like, oh nothing... i got one and this might be shocking to people it's from the jurassic world um whenever it switches from day to night like really fast before um where is it whenever they're going to let the raptors out when is that that's right after the Toronto attack right yeah so it's like day and night like really fast yeah. One yeah. scene's daylight, one scene's night, and you wait a minute, what is there something that should have happened in between? I guess that's a weird time jump. Uh-huh. But I don't know. It doesn't really bother me that much. Yeah. Um I mean you could state the obvious, I guess, like uh I don't really consider it a plot hole really. I, I think there's perfectly good explanations for the whole like T Rex breakout, uh, you know, and then the whole ravine, you know, there's like a cliff. I think there's a perfectly oh, yeah. good explanation for that, so that doesn't really bother me too much. Um, the the vehicles turning around, you know, and going back the way they came is one of those things. It's like, oh, I guess there was a turnaround somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, I don't really – nothing really bothers me that much, I don't think. Uh, at least not that I can think of at the moment. So, uh, sorry. Yeah, That's the I'm best sure there's a I lot. Got. I'm just – it's just you have to think about it a little bit. It's a good question, though. Yeah, definitely. You really have to think about it. I, I do want to do sure an episode on somewhere. that eventually, like a full episode on, you know, mistakes or plot holes and stuff like that. So we'll get to it. And then you got to think about, analyze what's a plot hole, what's a mistake, what's an inconsistency. Like you have to define these things. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's differences. But uh, yeah, thanks there. Um, we'll get to it eventually. Um, this next one is an email from Josh. And he uh -oh. says... In the Lost World, we learned that Isla Sorno is actually where the dinosaurs were being bred. They nurtured them for a few months and then transported to Isla Nublar to be in the park. But obviously not all the dinosaurs were bred there as we see a raptor hatchling near the beginning of Jurassic Park. How much of the original park dinosaur population do you think was actually hatched on Isla Sorna versus Isla Nublar? For example, do you think Rexy was actually born on Isla Sorna or Isla uh, Nublar? Man, too many Islas. Stop saying it. <sighs> Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Man, that's a, that's a tough question. Tough to read, yeah. You gotta think about that. <laughs> when do, I don't want to think. Oh, let me see. I would like to... I know nothing about the Lost World enough. I, I just kind of know the basis, even after seeing it. So I'm just going to say that I think maybe the base dinosaurs um, of Jurassic Park were from the Lost World Island. And then, uh, yeah, then they maybe bred later. So the base ones that were there before the problems came from there. So you maybe? mean like before... Uh, you know, so all the ones you saw in the movie, the first movie, were from yeah, that, from, yeah, from what, from Sorna, yeah, from from the breeding island. Okay, so I'm say that. yeah, so everything prior to the hatchling, essentially. Yeah, I want to say that, like their initial run through, like the initial ones coming over, and then um, yeah, I'm gonna, say, I don't know, that's hard, that's a hard question. Yeah, and I know I, there's a timeline here. Um, I'm reading. I'm just checking it out, um, and a lot of it comes from uh, the Mizrani stuff and and other sources. But like here it says, um, 
1986, InGen successfully clones their first dinosaur on Site B, Velociraptor. Um, 1990, the first mature animals were moved from Site B to Isla Nublar. Um, so maybe here's a plot point, plot hole from the question before, as in what that exact question that Josh asked, maybe that is the plot hole. Like when did things move over? What happened? When Who bred where? what's going on on the other island like maybe just the whole relationship between the two islands is a plot hole yeah i I, it's tough i mean i don't know and and the whole like transportation of dinosaurs just doesn't seem like plausible plausible and like the best idea i mean it obviously didn't really work um in jurassic park i mean the, the whole movie starts off that way like having an issue with transportation um yeah so I feel like a lot of them would have to be transported as they're smaller. Um, as far as like uh, what dinosaurs currently on that island, like I, I have a hard time because we don't really know how old a lot of them are. There's there's this whole like accelerated growth rate kind of thing maybe going on, and you know who knows like how old they actually are because they're genetic you know genetically modified and all that and. You know, so a T-Rex, I don't remember what the time frame was, but like seven years or something like that. So that would put that like pre, you know, the what was the first one? 1986, it said on this timeline that I'm reading. So, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be right around that time. Uh, but, yeah, it's interesting because like they're full sized, but I don't know. I it's hard to say. I would just say that whatever we see was created on on Sorna and transported over, and mm-hmm. then they have. But the the whole thing about the the lab was like a front in a way, but then like there was actual stuff going on there. See, it's, that's where I get confused right there because they yeah. are hatching them in the lab. So, mm. yeah. Um. And, and then here's a, here's a question for you too. So, in Jurassic World, they hatched and grew and showed everything from that park on site. Why did they need two islands for Jurassic Park? Ah, oh, man, you're really giving me some hard questions here. I don't. Know. Yeah, there's your plot holes right there. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, I guess they just kind of wanted a, a place because. Let's let's assume there was construction going on, so they're trying to build this park as they're also breeding dinosaurs. And obviously they weren't done building. Like it was still a work in progress in Jurassic Park. There's construction crews in the movie. So there's a giant hole in the side of the uh the visitor <laughs> center. So they're not done. Yeah. So I assume like they had that first island and they're like, Well, let's build on that island because the first park actually was San Diego. San Diego was the original concept, right? And then they moved from there to the full island. So essentially, they can't, I guess maybe they couldn't create these things in San Diego. So they wanted to create them on this island and then transport them to San Diego, I guess. But then that fell Mm. through and then they moved to Nublar. So um, I would assume that's the reason why, you know, they start off on Sorna and then move everything from there to Nublar. And and then they're like, well, you know, we can create a small hatchery here. Let's kind of do that. And then Hammond's like messing it all up by saying like, I've been there for the birth of every little creature here in Jurassic <laughs> Park. You know, like, so, so what, yeah. he's traveling between two islands? Like, hey, John, John, uh, we got a new dinosaur being uh, created over here. You want to come over here? And he like jumps in the copter and he's like, got to fly to Sorna. And then the back on yeah. new bar is like, hey, John, uh, you know, raptor's being born. You want to come back? Uh, oh no! Where do I do? I'm stuck in the middle of the islands. It's 86 miles between these. Uh, what do I do? So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a little messy. I never really understood that, <laughs> especially without seeing Lost World until now, and I, I still don't understand that. Who so. knows? Uh, it's a good question yeah. though, and I feel like this one kind of takes like a lot of research. Like it, it's kind of tough to answer on the fly. But I, I think we say, did a decent job. That question is way too advanced for this segment. <laughs> Yeah, Josh, have you listened before? Because, I, you know, Veronica listens. I don't know. Did you – have you heard our answers? 
<laughs> like, look at the difference of questions. Veronica's like, yeah, we know. We, we ramble. We point. We ramble. We, we talk about some things. We do some dinosaur roars. We get cut off. And Josh is like, explain to me this in-depth question. <laughs> like, we don't do that here. No. No. So thanks again, Josh. But uh, let's move on here. I think this is the last one. It's a voice memo from Aaron. Uh, give me a second here. I'll try to get this one playing. If my mouse works, hey, mouse, work, you know? Hey, Jen and Brad, it's Aaron. I'm sorry, maybe I should clarify. It seems as of the last mailbag, you guys have completely forgot who I am. <laughs> maybe it's because I've been working so much and haven't had the time to collaborate. But anyway, it's Aaron Beyer, you know, contributor on the Jurassic Park podcast. <laughs> Brad, I'm the guy you talk to on a daily basis about the podcast and other Jurassic-related things. We counted on our favorite Jurassic toys and reminisced about them for multiple hours right here on the podcast. I'm the Aaron that helped create the original Jurassic Park podcast segment, The Game Trail, where we discuss Jurassic Park video games. Brad, I introduced you, you, and the audience to the 2XL, and we played Chaos in Jurassic Park. We created our own Jurassic story with a friendly robot. <laughs> we even made a video congratulating Mattel on getting the Jurassic World toy license. <laughs> Maybe you guys are mad at me because I have a fan, Becky, who called in and said hello to me. Surely you guys would never deny me my one fan. Speaking of, hello to you too, Becky. Let's collaborate soon. Brad, Jen, we talked for hours for the 100th episode. We discussed our hopes and our dreams for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I flew from Toronto, Canada to Philadelphia to hang out with you and the rest of the crew at the Jurassic World The Exhibition event. Jen, you brought me a lanyard all the oh, way no. from Florida. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to write in and remind you all of the good times we've had talking about this amazing franchise. I hope you guys are doing well, and I love this segment. Can't wait to talk to you again soon. Oh, oh man. We did all that, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, man. Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> Have you listened to this segment before? <laughs> well, oh, my gosh. So I, let me see if I can find this. There was a – yeah, uh, Becky, the awesome Becky sent us a voicemail. And, oh, man, I just misheard or something. I don't know. I'm trying to search for it right here. Um no, that's not her. That's, uh, 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 let's see, John. Nope. Hey, hey, Becky, what's your phone? What, which one is you? <laughs> no, oh, wait, here it is. Here Becky it is. And be I like, found hey, it. that time. <laughs> All right, so here it is. I'm going to play this one. Let's take a listen. Hey, Brad, uh, Aaron, Jennifer, and everybody else who's on the podcast. So, All right, so that was the intro. All right, so here's the deal, Aaron. Um, me and Jen had a lengthy chat about the transcriptions from Google, and we talked about how how much it messes up and really doesn't know what it, what the person is saying because I get this long transcription of the, the entire voicemail, and I read one once. If you listened, you'd know. Um, that was like way off. It was like not even close to what the person said. So, and everybody should listen. It was yeah. funny. So what happened here in this case, in Becky's case, I didn't – actually, now that I realize, I didn't mishear. In the transcription, which is right in front of me as I press play, it says, Hey, Brad, Aaron, Jennifer, and everybody else who's on the podcast. I didn't know who Aaron was. And I'm like – I just read it, and I, I went, while listening to her say it and reading the word Aaron, E-R-I-N, so uh, that's what happened. I, I, you know, your name, A-A-R-O-N, this one, E-R-I-N. I just, I read that, and I was like, who's, I think I said it in the episode, I'm like, who's, who's Aaron? Like, <laughs> so that's my explanation. That's it right there. Sorry, oh, dude. God. I didn't forget who you were. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, you know that, obviously. But uh, uh, yeah, we do talk every day. And yeah, hopefully you can forgive me. That was a great, great response. Yeah, that was, I I just, he sent it, it over. A great mess. He sent it over and I saw, um, I saw the, 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 how it was like labeled. It said JP Pod, who's Aaron? And I'm like, oh no. Like <laughs> I knew exactly what it was referring to. And oh, I was like, this, get ready. I'm going to get bashed here. So, yeah. Oh, man. 
You're you're a great contributor to the podcast. You've done so much. You created the logo. Like you 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 yeah, did right. it. For, like it's awesome. You've done so much. And trust me, I can't forget you, man. He's like the backbone of everything. Yeah, it's so great. And yeah, Becky, sorry I misinterpreted it back then. Um, when you listen to it without reading it, it definitely I definitely hear Aaron. So my bad. <laughs> 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 so funny but yeah that brings us to the end of the february edition of jurassic mailbag wait how um, do you say february f- how do i say it did yeah, i what, am like i saying february it? february is that That's all right what it like. all right so now i'm gonna have to apologize to feb <laughs> feb right, now i'm self-conscious <laughs> come on you have to apologize to, to the month to the month <laughs> you think... insulted the month oh, you've man. offended it I know there's live playback, but I don't want to mess up the recording. Um, Feb- <laughs> February. What did I? What am I saying? Am you're I saying-, saying February or something? February. February. Like you're Fe- saying it real fast. Fe- February. Feb- Febu- February. I know okay. I'm missing the R. I'm not saying this, the first R. <laughs> February. See, I Fe- know Febru. Feb- Febu. No way, I don't. February, February. <laughs> that just sounds weird, though. February. <laughs> I can't say that. February. February. Maybe I say February. Yeah, I say it with an, a ya. Yeah. Febu. February. I, I don't see. Yeah, I don't put an a in there. I just say okay, you. Mu- like February. Must be a regional thing. Hey yo, this is February mailbag. <laughs> so February. you better listen, uh, cause you know we're from Jersey out here, and you know that's how we say February. We don't pronounce everything. Feb-y- all wary so, up here in Pittsburgh. For the March Feb-y- mailbag, I, I can say Feb-y- March. I can I'll say March. That. So for the March mailbag, send send us your your voicemails, your emails. Tell us how you say February. 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 How do you say it? You know, February. where are you? Are you in Michigan? Are you in California? Are you in you know, yes. uh, you know, uh, you know, some other country, you know, we out in Jersey, we don't, we don't know what's out there. We don't, you know, what other we're, countries are there? I don't even know. We're Who in knows? that. We're you know, in we that. Just, we just all about Jersey, you know, Bruce Springsteen and, you know, Asbury Park and all that. That's what we about, you know. <laughs> we put coleslaw on sandwiches. <laughs> we do. Yeah, that, that's a thing, you know, pork roll. A, oh, no. It's a thing. Um. But, uh, yeah. So, wow. What has this come to? This is getting worse every month. And it's only the second like month it. of this year. Like, last last time, I was going to say last year, last one, it was, like, our most normal one. And I feel the energy of people were like, oh, okay, that's weird. Yeah, we got to step it up. And I think we did. I think we hit think it. We like it, we, It's out of the park. I don't know where we are. I don't know. But... Yeah, no, for real. You message us, let us know next time. You know, start sending them now because obviously we have a lot. Uh, we get a lot of people, you know, sending in stuff. Um, so start now, you know. Hit up the uh, the phone number, 732-825-7763. Email us, JurassicParkPod at gmail.com. Uh, you know, go to our website, JurassicParkPodcast.com. We have a contact form on there. Send us a message. And for everybody outside of the U.S., you know, all those other countries out there, I don't know what they are, but, like, you know, uh, you can't... <laughs> you don't know geography, yeah, huh? you can't You can't call that phone number, you know, because, you know, it's a New Jersey phone number. So, uh, you know, email us a voice memo. So literally just pull out your phone, hit that record button, and uh, send us that. Email us, a, you know, a message. So Caleb did that this time. He's, he's not from... I don't... You know, he ain't from another country, I don't believe, but, uh, you know... He did that. Aaron did the same thing. So do that as well. So don't feel forced to, you know, only call the voicemail. But yeah. So and Jen, I know you uh, you recently redid redid the uh, the uh, website. <laughs> you know, you redid the uh, you know. I, I'm stuck in this accent. I can't get out of it. You redid the website that you uh, you you work diligently on constantly. So yeah. if you want, promote that a little bit. All right, let me let me promote that. Um, I <laughs> redid, rebuilt, redone yeah, redid the it, entire <laughs> entire uh, Jurassic. Oh my god, <laughs> my stuff <laughs> network. Let me try again. Let me try again. So I redid, rebuilt, redid, redone, whatever, the entire Bryce Dallas Howard network, which is my thing. And 
I changed the domain. Our domain is now BraceDHoward.com, which is really cool and official sounding. And we have a brand new layout, completely responsive. You can get on your phone with it. You could watch videos on your phone now. You could access the whole thing completely rebuild from the ground up it nearly killed me but there it is it's done it's out it's rebranded redone it's like jurassic world to jurassic park we we did that the park is open the website is open go visit it it's awesome i put my my tears into it so please enjoy yeah, I think it looks amazing. And and Bryce kind of like endorsed it herself too, which is awesome. Like, I know. She's liking it. Her peeps liked it. Everyone's liking it. And she's sending me things. She's sending me a message and she's like how amazing it is. And she's, they're into it. They all like it. Yeah, I think it looks great. And it's, yeah, it's the number one source. I mean, let's, let's be honest. It, it looks amazing. So yeah, everybody go there. And uh, where else can everybody find you online? Um, You can follow me on Twitter at your leisure if you'd like if you don't that's fine it's um jennifer underscore lynn 89 um you could follow the bryce dallas howard network at bdh network and the new domain is brycedhoward.com so go check that out awesome i'm sorry i'm laughing as you're just re- <laughs> what? i just like sitting here laughing i was like thinking back to me doing that like new jersey accent so yeah hey everybody sorry for that but uh yeah so We'll see you next month, if maybe. I don't know. If you listen, we'll, we'll find <laughs> out next time. If you made it this far, congratulations. <laughs> We're going to make you a wall of fame or something. An award ceremony. Oh, God. Well, Jen, I'll see you next month. Whether okay. anybody listens or not, I'll see you next time. Thanks for uh, joining me. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Make sure to visit JurassicParkPodcast.com to find all our past episodes, brand new news articles, information on how to contact us, and much more. It's a great source for everything related to the podcast, and of course, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. Head to JurassicParkPodcast.com and help us build a great community. Anybody hear that? Thanks for listening to the 136th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. Of course, a big thanks to Jennifer for joining me for another fun mailbag segment. These are always some of my favorite segments to do, and you guys all keep us on our toes each and every month. Thank you so much for calling, writing, tweeting into us this month. It's been another fantastic month for the Jurassic fandom. I wanted to mention this one again. Don't miss Tom Fishenden's giveaway that is currently running on our website. We got a post up there right now explaining all the details, and you can win that Hasbro Terramimus. So head to our website, fill out the form for your entries, and stay tuned. The contest is currently running now through February 19th, closing at 12 a.m. EST, with the winner to be announced later that week. Also, don't forget to listen to our two bonus episodes, that is two, uh, the News Roundup with Aaron Beyer and the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Super Bowl trailer with Steve Hurl. Both are awesome episodes. I had a lot of fun recording them so download them and enjoy if you want to interact with us we do most of our work over on twitter at jurassic park pod we're also on facebook at facebook.com slash jurassic park podcast and our instagram handle is at jurassic park podcast you can listen to us via itunes google play podomatic youtube our website or wherever else podcasts are found so make sure to subscribe to automatically get new episodes every week if you haven't already please give us a five-star review in itunes or a great review wherever you listen to the podcast it will seriously help out our rankings and make it easier for fans like you to find us don't forget to check out jurassicparkpodcast.com for all the links you heard here today if you want to get a hold of us you can email us with any news stories mp3s comments or or if you want to debut a segment of your own, send them to JurassicParkPod at gmail.com. Or you can submit questions directly on our website contact form. If you'd like to record something for the show, send it in to us and we'll feature it in an upcoming episode. If you don't have any way to record, you can give our voicemail line a call and leave us a message. That number is 732-825-7763. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now.